In almost all of my videos, I recommend the Night by Noble as an amazing plastic ocarina for beginners or travelers. But has this ocarina met its match? Today, we're going to review the Bravura Alto C, produced by Focalink and sold by Songbird. There's a bit of fairly recent history with this particular model of ocarina. Focalink and Songbird are some of the most well-known names in ocarinas, and most people get their start with ocarinas from these companies. As such, they sell a lot of plastic ocarinas. And most of those plastic ocarinas in the past were almost exclusively bright and colorful. Well, no more, because they just released a plastic ocarina in black. There's nothing wrong with bright and colorful ocarinas. The color of the plastic does not determine the quality of the instrument. However, they wanted to appeal to a more serious audience with the black Alto C Rivera. As simple as something like coloration is, the color of an instrument can make or break the distinguishment between a toy and a serious instrument for some people. As an experienced ocarinist, I think that people should just get whatever color they like most and call it a day, but as a marketing professional, I also understand that image matters. Again, the color of the instrument does not determine the quality of the ocarina, but I think it's important to have a serious looking option for beginners. Look at the Night by Noble. It's either black or white. Nothing about the instrument says toy, whereas a bright green plastic ocarina might look like that. You wouldn't bring a bright green ocarina to a black tie performance, whereas the Night by Noble, with this black matte finish, it does not look out of place in the slightest. Again, color does not determine quality, but it is nice to have a variety of professional looking instruments. So today, we'll be reviewing the newly released color of the Bravura Alto C. I've never actually owned a Bravura Alto C, but I have played one when I volunteered for Songbird about five years ago at a convention. I sold a lot of these guys. I love my colorful ocarinas, but every time I see like a black ocarina, I'm just like, ooh, that looks, that looks nice. I want it. So when Songbird posted that they had the black Bravura from Focalink, I, I, I needed to buy it. So I bought it. I've played different colors of this particular model, so I have faith that this will be a great instrument, but let's get on with the review. Let's begin with the technical details. This is a plastic 12-hole Alto C Ocarina, which is your typical range for a 12-hole of just over an octave and a half. And it is fully chromatic within that range, meaning you can play all sharps and flats of notes within the top and bottom. It comes in a cardboard box with a fingering guide on the inside. Oh, my exposure was a little wonky when I had the, the white reflecting on here. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Subscribe. <laughs> and it also has a very nicely decorated neck strap, as you can see right here. On Songbird, this instrument costs $35, which is a typical price range for a good plastic Alto C. It's about the same price as a Night by Noble. So now let's review the sound of this instrument and we'll compare it to the Night by Noble. We'll play a scale and the Song of Storms. I like this instrument. <laughs> the Bravura Alto C is super easy to play. It has a really linear breath curve, meaning that as you go to higher notes, you don't need to like change your breath pressure in an unnatural way. You just slightly increase how much you blow as you go from low notes to high notes. And you decrease how much you blow going from high notes to low notes. It's very linear and very easy to get a hold of, making this a great ocarina for beginners. And it has a really solid tone. But let's compare this to The Night by Noble.
My cat jumped out of the window right as I was finishing the song, but we're using this take. Let's compare these instruments. The first thing that I noticed was that the Knight by Noble is considerably sharper than the Bravura. This is actually because the Knight by Noble is tuned to where A equals 442 hertz, whereas most ocarinas are tuned to A equals 440 hertz. In Korea and some other East Asian countries, they tune the note A to be 445 or 446 hertz, and this ocarina being tuned slightly sharp allows you to be actually rather flexible on which tuning you play with. You can overblow and play a little sharp to be in tune with Korean tuning, and you can underblow and be a little flat to be in tune with international tuning. On the flip side, the bravura being tuned to A equals 440 means that you don't need to make any adjustments to your breath to play it in international tuning. You would need to really overblow this instrument to get it at Korean tuning. But if you don't live in East Asia, or you don't play in an ocarina ensemble that uses instruments tuned to Korean tuning, this is your, probably a better instrument for you. Next, we'll go over some other differences. Between these two instruments, if you want to play an international tuning, I would recommend the Knight by Noble. If you have lower breath pressure as your preference, and I would recommend the Bravura if you have higher breath pressure as your preference. But that really comes down strictly to personal preference. I like both and I recognize the strengths and weaknesses of both tuning styles. Now, let's go over ergonomics. First of all, they, they weigh about the same, but the Knight by Noble is a bit smaller, at least when it comes to length. When it comes to thickness, the Knight by Noble is a little bit thicker. <laughs> it's a little bit thicky-sticky. <laughs> Why am I like this? But they're a very similar size and about the same weight. The Bravura is slightly larger, and the holes are slightly more spaced apart, so if you have larger hands, I would recommend the Bravura. However, if you have a small bag where length is an issue, or you want to put this ocarina in your pocket and length is an issue, the Knight by Noble is a little bit smaller when it comes to length and will fit into more packaging. But it's a very slight difference, and when it comes down to it, that's really not your most pressing matter when it comes to selection. Next, let's compare tone and ease for playing all notes. So. Both these ocarinas have really good tone, and both of them are really easy to play on all notes. However, given the difference in tuning, I would recommend the Bravura as easier to play simply because it's easier to play it in international tuning. But again, the tuning that's easier to play is purely dependent on what tuning you prefer to play at. And both these instruments have great tone, but because I have so much more experience with the Knight by Noble, I feel like I like the Knight by Noble's tone more, but it's such a close comparison that I would rate these pretty equally when it comes to tone. If I had an equal amount of experience playing each of these ocarinas, I would probably rate them equally. So it's it's a big old tomato-tomato situation. Last, let's compare price and aesthetic. The Bravura is $35 plus tax and shipping. If you're not buying more than one ocarina, you're not gonna meet the free shipping minimum for uh, Songbird ocarinas. So this will cost more than the Knight by Noble which on sale is about $34 or $35 depending on the day. Sometimes the price is above $40, but it's typically between $30 and $45. And with prime shipping, this does edge out on the price metric compared to the Bravura. But they're about the same price, so that really isn't that much of an issue when it comes to comparison. And last, let's compare aesthetics. Both of them have split holes, meaning there's a sub hole on your left hand and a sub hole on your right hand on both instruments, as you can see right right here sub hole for your right hand, sub hole for your left hand. One thing I like on the build of the Bravura that the Knight by Noble does not have is that there's a small indentation right here. Um, this makes it a lot easier to slide between the hole and the sub hole, and it makes it a little bit smoother to play and a little bit easier to find, especially if you're a novice who's not used to where the holes on your instrument are. Aesthetically, I prefer the Knight by Noble, but these, these are basically slightly different versions of the same looking ocarina. They're both black, they're both not really shiny, they both play great, and they both have logos on the front and whatever country they're made in on the back, which is Korea and Taiwan. Basically, I have to rate these ocarinas completely equally. What it really comes down to is your preference on size, tuning, and style. So to finish the review of the Bravura ocarina, would I recommend it? Yes. Absolutely. If you're stuck between the uh, Bravura and the Knight by Noble, 
Honestly, just get whichever one is less expensive or easier for you to obtain. They're both really solid instruments. A, a couple things that put that are in this instrument's favor are the fact that it comes with a really stylish neck strap. So if you're learning, you're never gonna drop the ocarina. You can just, you just, ah, we can, I have a big head. <laughs> you can just put it on and you're not gonna drop it. So you have two layers of protection, which is awesome. The built on neck strap alone is enough to warrant the price difference on this, especially for someone who's traveling or learning how to play the instrument. It means you don't need to have to fit it in a pocket, which means the size issue is negated. But again, I would have to rate these two instruments totally equally. And one thing about the neck strap, um, I thought this was the conclusion, but one more point. <laughs> one thing about neck straps is that if you're an experienced ocarina player who's like never gonna drop your instrument and keeps your instruments in bags or cases, Neck straps can actually kind of get in the way. They dangle and they make it a little bit more awkward to grip your instrument. It's really no big deal, but it's still a slight inconvenience a tiny portion of the time. Whereas not having a neck strap on by default, um, that's a lot easier to like tuck, put in your bag. The strap doesn't get caught on anything. Again, this is a preference thing. If you're learning how to play the ocarina for the first time, I would say a neck strap is essential. And if you're someone who wants to wear your ocarina around your neck as you play, also a neck strap is essential. But again, it's just a preference thing. I still personally prefer the Knight by Noble, but if I had an equal amount of experience with either ocarina, I would recommend them equally. So... <laughs> that was a struggle. The Bravura Plastic Alto C in black is an amazing, professional-looking starter ocarina or travel ocarina. The neck strap adds an extra layer of safety, and it has a great tone, easy ergonomics, and a really easy breath curve. I fully recommend this instrument, and honestly, the Knight by Noble has some great competition when it comes to the black aesthetic. So, which ocarina do you think you prefer? If you have both a Bravura and a Knight by Noble, I'd love to know what you think. I would give each of these five stars for what they are, which are amazing plastic ocarinas. And I want to know what you think. What do you prefer? So I'll leave a comment below and remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching this review and I'll see you next time. Bye!